Hi, I'm Maggie. Welcome to my new studio. Do you like it? It's been a while since my last all-style video has been released, but I've just decided to record my videos in the more appropriate conditions. And here we are. Let's talk about something which seems to be quite difficult for many of you. Dine on many tables. You should already know how to join two tables, but in the real cases, we often have to join many more than just two tables. Fortunately, SQL is designed to meet programmers' demands and allows us to write very complex join statements. There is nothing new to learn since we have discussed join basics. I think we should just apply that to a real query. Then, I will explain how it works and what each line of code does. We have three tables. EMP, where we store employees' data. Positions, where you will find basic data about job positions and salaries at the company. And Teams, which stores everything we want to know about team assignment. What we want to retrieve is a table showing employees, an employment structure and business relationships in the company. Select E name, B name, P position, P salary mean, P salary max, T team, from Teams T, natural right author join EMP E, join positions P on E position is equal to P position, left join EMP B on EID bus is equal BID EMP. As you see, we've got three joins here. First executed join is the one on tables teams and EMP with natural right author join. Because the only matching attributes with the same names in this relation are on ID team, therefore the implicit join condition is TID team is equal EID team. It is right author join, so each tuple from EMP would be included in the result set and as a result, we have retrieved a relation where each employee has been assigned to his team data, if such data exists, which means that he is a part of any team. If not, then all team fields will have no values. In the next step, our result set is being joined with the table positions using a simple inner join. So now we have additional data with maximum and minimal salary for the position specified. Finally, in the last join statement, we will find out who is whose boss. This time, we match one and the same table using left author join with the condition E ID boss is equal B ID EMP. We have used an author join to keep employees with no boss in the final result set. Incidentally, this means we don't forget the most important employee in the company, the boss of all bosses. So, what is the final result? It is a table consisting of values for attributes from the very first line of our query. The employees' names, names or their bosses, employees' positions in the company, their salary spreads, and the names of teams their employees belong to. We can join as many tables in one query as we want, but it's strongly recommended to be a master of algebra of sets. It's just a little difficult. Now you know how to do it, so have fun and come back soon to watch my next episode. Bye!